Hello everyone, it's uh, Nikolai again. Um, it's the holiday season and um, there's so many exciting holidays coming up around the world. Um, today we're going to focus on a uh, wreath. Let's get started. Um, I have prepared some uh, different materials um, for this wreath that we're going to make. Um, what's uh, specific about all the materials is that uh, they dry very nicely. So I have picked up um, a lot of barunia, some leucodendron, a lot of different berries, uh, rose hips and so forth. I made the base of the wreath of a soft cypress. Um, this is um, uh, used a lot for the holiday seasons. Um, I built it on a uh, like a sponge uh, wreath and um, it's sort of decorated with green uh, all the way around. So we're having all these exciting um, leucodendron, um, there's some eucalyptus seed pots, there's so many really really exciting stuff. So what's really cool about all these materials is that they dry really really beautifully. So uh, first I'm going to sort of lay the base of the wreath and I'm going to do that with this uh, rose hip. So I'm basically going to go the same direction all the way around uh, with the same material. So here I have done the first circle of uh, materials. Uh, the rose hip um, is sort of nicely divided uh, all over the wreath. That's a really nice aroma starting to come up from the soft cypress here. So this is the first uh, layer. I'm gonna go into the uh, different barunias. This season around is, is very special for me. Um, I used to make a lot of these even before I was interested in flowers. My uh, mother was always working with uh, Christmas wreaths up to the um, holiday season and um, I was very often like helping uh, making ribbon or uh, eventually when I was a teenager making a lot of um, uh, Christmas wreath and Christmas arrangements myself. Um, before I uh, sort of knew that I was uh, wanted to become uh, working with, with flowers so there's a lot of uh, nostalgic moments for me. So I think uh, now we have the uh, baronias uh, in the wreath, the rose hip, um, and now I'm going to continue sort of in the same different materials. I like this is what I call the decorative uh, wreath. Uh, decorative means that if you would cut it in half, that is more or less the same materials lined up on each side uh, of there. So basically the same. Uh, volume of material is, is divided out throughout the wreath. It's the reason why I do not use water on the base that these materials open up really nicely when there is no water. They sort of get like a shock and then they sort of pop open uh, quite large. So if you don't have that much experience uh, of making wreath, uh, I often suggest that uh, you work a lot uh, as the clock. So we will have uh, 12 o'clock six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, and then twist again and do the same 12, six, three, nine. If you kind of do that way, you get the material spread evenly uh, throughout the wreath. So lots of movement and sort of the, the constantly the same way you hand move. In that way, you really got, you will get an amazing balance. Um, another thing which is very important uh, of making uh, a wreath of any kind really, is to get a lot on the side um, of the wreath on the outside as well as on the inside. What this does is it gives this very beautiful curve when you um, are working on the wreath. If you tend to work uh, only of the surface, it will become very flat. So that 3D effect will not really occur if you don't use material here on the inside as well as on the outside. Um, now I'm gonna put in a little bit of sort of longer materials. In this particular wreath, I have chosen that all the materials are sort of having the same flow. I have three different kind of wires. Um, uh, the higher the num the lower the number, the thicker uh, the wire is. So this is the thickest, number 20. So here I'm making uh, the small wire. I'm doing a small hook like this. 
and uh, for that I'm sort of holding on to the material and then uh, inserting the hook so when I put the wreath up it won't fall over. And when I insert the wire um, as I'm holding uh, the sort of the different materials into the wreath, uh, I never go like a straight angle down. I always go a sort of uh, in an angle like this or the other way. In that way, the material has more difficult of getting uh, sort of loosened, uh, loosened up from the arrangement. So the next step before finishing up the wreath is um, putting in a lot of dry material. In this uh, bowl here, I have uh, gathered different dry materials uh, for the holiday season. Uh, half of them is, uh, has been gold painted, and the other ones have natural, like the, the, the pine cones and the, um, the dry uh, seed pots here. So um, I'll just show you um, two uh, pine cones here, how I often uh, wire them before I uh, use them in, in wreath or arrangements. So um, if you want to show uh, the top, you go on the bottom here, I use one wire on the very top. I use one wire here on the very back, uh, insert it um, uh, in a U over here and then I sort of twist the, the wire. So basically, so basically there's no way you can see um, the wire uh, after you have uh, sort of twisted it within the petals of the pine cone. And then I sort of twist the wire um, so it becomes like one uh, item like this. And then here I would sort of cut on the bottom so this is nice and straight and only one uh, stem will sort of go into uh, the wreath. Since the wreath is now quite full, there's a lot of things going on, it can be more difficult with the balance to really uh, find out where you put what. So at this stage I focus a lot on doing it quite systematically. So for instance here, I would put in a pine cone at 12 o'clock here, and then I would go down at six o'clock. You see I put in one here. Then I would go over here at three o'clock. Um, this is the final uh, design. Uh, all the fresh uh, materials first uh, on the fresh cypress wreath and then all the dry uh, pine cones, etc. Uh, in the end, um, beautiful smells and a nice uh, holiday feeling. Uh, it's really fun to watch uh, over the next couple uh, of months. So um, I wish you all uh, happy holidays and uh, thanks for watching.